So, have you ever thought that making chopsticks out of scrap wood would be a really good idea? Well, it is for the first two when you're trying to hand paint them, taper them, you're like, hey, that's not so bad. Then you make any more, you realize very quickly that that sucks. So, I got a big order in and I figured I'm not going to do it that way. So, I figured out something different. That's when I made this guy. Quick, simple jig, made on the router, to dimension, taper, and then chamfer chopsticks so you can batch them out like a pro. So if you want to do that, well, let me show you. Let's get to work. To kick this project off, I went to the garage and grabbed some five coral maple that I've had acclimating for a little while. I broke it down so I could take it into the shop a little easier. Once I got into the shop, I ripped it down to a four inch width. That way, the three grooves would be nice and evenly spaced across the board. After cutting it to width, next up was cutting it to size. So I set up my cross cut sled and an even one foot for two reasons. One, because I knew that'd be plenty long enough to cut any average size chopstick. And two, one foot just sounded like a good number. Now to get started on the grooves that actually make the chopsticks, the first groove will actually size it down to a perfect quarter inch square. So what I did was I grabbed a 3 8 inch router bit, set it to a quarter inch high, and set my fence to one inch offset. Then I ran it on through. So what this will do is you can take your slightly oversized blanks and then plant them down and it'll match that depth. Now the next two grooves of the jig will actually be slightly tapered. So through a little bit of math and a little bit of trial and error, I figured out that I needed a shim that was 3 16 of an inch thick and I just cut it out of some one inch stock. Once I had that shim cut, I just used a little bit of Starbond super glue and glued it butt to butt to one end of the jig just to shim it up just enough to get just the right taper. Now a little backstory on how I figured out what size shim I'd actually need. What I did was I measured down one inch from one end of the jig where I knew the chopstick would eventually stop. I measured on the side of the jig down an eighth of an inch and then nine inches away, the average length of a chopstick, I measured down a quarter of an inch. And so I just kept holding it up and setting it on the bit just to see where, where what bit height would actually line up with both of those and what shim size would actually make it line up with both of those. Because I knew the tip needed to be an eighth of an inch and the back end needed to be a quarter. Now when making this center groove, I used a quarter inch bit here, but what you will want to do is once you want it once, you tap the fence over just ever so slightly and then run it again just to give it a little bit of wiggle room so you can actually get the chopsticks in and out. Here you can see the marks I made to actually set my bit height. So I've got an eighth inch mark at one inches, and then a quarter inch mark at two inches in from the other end. So that I use to set my bit height, but also another way to check the groove depth after you've done it. And it might take a little bit of trial and error. Now to make the last groove of the jig, which is the chamfering groove, I took a V bit and I set it to depth using the center groove so the depths would match, and then I ran it through. Now you're done with the shim, you can just pop it on off and clean up the jig so you're ready for the next step.
to make the chopstick stop, I made a groove with my dado stack three eighths of an inch wide and half an inch deep, which is just halfway through the jig. Those measurements don't matter that much. What matters is that the edge of that stop is one inch from the edge of the jig, because that's where you have that eight inch depth on the table groove. Now to make the bench hook for the jig, so that way when you're hand planting you can hook it on the edge of your bench and it stays in place. I cut a little dado about three quarters of an inch wide and about a half inch deep. When you're making these grooves, if you got your pieces already cut, just make sure to do a little bit of test fitting to make sure you get that perfectly snug fit. Because you don't want to have to reset up the data blade later on. Next up, what I did is I just ripped down that one piece of three quarter inch stock and ripped off that little three eighths of an inch strip off the edge to make the front stop. Since I have a French cleat wall in this shop, I decided to add a little extra feature on the bench hook. Uh, as is, I just took a little V groove bit, ran the stop over it so I gave it just a little bit of a groove. So that way, when I put the bench hook on, it'll actually hook right on that French cleat wall and it won't go anywhere. And once I got the stock for the stop block and the bench hook, roughly down to the width and size I wanted, I just had to cut it to length. But when I did this, I made sure to leave it just a little bit over, so that way, once I had it in the jig, I had just a little bit to hand plane down so I could flush it up nicely. And both of those were just a little bit thick, so what I did here is just plane it down so I got that perfectly snug fit. Once the glue was all dried, then I could take a hand plane and just knock down those stops just to make them nice and flush with the surface of the jig. And I did that with the edges and everything. Once I had everything pretty well flushed up, just to make sure I got a nice flat work surface on the top of the jig, I took some 220 sandpaper and glued it down to a nice melanin shell that I knew was pretty flat that I checked with some straight edges and then just sanded it away until it felt just right and it didn't rock at all on the top of my table saw. So for a shop jig, this step might be wholly unnecessary. But it's my jig and I wanted it to look nice. So I chamfered all the edges with my hand plane and even chamfered the bench hook with my chisel. But come on, who doesn't like the sound of a nice sharp chisel making a chamfer on a nice piece of wood? <laughs> 
Now to finish it up, I soaked it down pretty good in some water soil, making sure to get in all those little grooves. But once I had it slathered down, I let that dry for a while, but then later on I came back and waxed down the top because I wanted to make sure I had a nice slick surface for the hand plane to ride on when I was making those chopsticks. Now once you got the jig all finished up, it's time to put it to work. So what I do is I make blanks ahead of time, typically about 9 inches long for a typical male chopstick, about 8 and a quarter for a female, and I rip them out 5 sixteenths on the bandsaw, so that way I can flush them up on the jig nice and perfect at a quarter inch square. Once you got it planed down to a nice quarter inch square, you can move on to tapering. I like to count my passes on each side to make sure it's roughly even and it's, you know, the grain staying roughly centered, but that's not 100% necessary. If the grain starts giving you trouble though, just grab an extra chopstick blank, slide it in the end, and play in the other direction with the grain. But just make sure that you keep the taper in the right direction. Once you've got it tapered down so the tip is a perfect eighth of an inch square, you can move on to chamfering the edges. This is going to give you a tip that looks just like an octagon. How many passes it takes is just kind of going to depend on the wood, so just do a little bit of trial and error, but make sure you're counting your passes so you can do equal number of passes on each corner to get a perfect octagon. Now to finish up the top, what I like to do is just go with the classic pyramid style top, so you're just kind of chamfering down the edges and just counting your passes, working them so you get that rough kind of pyramid looking shape. But there's all kind of options you can do. You can just do one straight angle, you can do it flat cut off, you can do all kinds of different things, whatever your preference. The last thing I do is rub it down with a little bit of tongue oil, let it soak in, and once that's dry, I just give it a little bit of shellac. And that's done.